Hi, it's Steph, and welcome to my veggie garden. This is the first time that I'm working out here this year, and I am going to plant some of my winter sown cool weather veggies. So here I have some of my blue and purple kale, some onions. These are the um, onion de Parma. Uh, these were winter sown back on February 5th, and they look beautiful, and now it's time to get them out in the garden. So I'm gonna do that today, and come on and join me. So in this bed here, I'm going to plant out all of my brassicas. And the reason I'm going to plant my brassicas together is because I have this netting that I'm going to place over it. Now this is called insect barrier netting. And the reason I'm going to use this is because the brassica class of vegetables, so that's your kale, your collards, your broccoli, Brussels sprouts, um, and so forth, they are prone to something called um, cabbage moth or brassica moth and also these little green caterpillars that will decimate your plants if they're not protected. So I'm gonna go ahead and plant all of these in this bed so that I can use this cover and cover the whole bed and all of the crops under it or that are planted in it. Um, I'm gonna amend the soil with some mushroom compost and I'm also gonna add a little bit of plant tone and some bone meal to the planting hole. The bone meal will help with the root development and then the plant tone will just give it a good start and a feed of fertilizer because I have not yet fertilized any of these plants that have grown in the winter sowing containers. So that's what we're gonna do and I'm gonna go ahead and get this done. gotten the bed all prepped. I have the bone meal all scattered and so the soil is ready to go. I've separated out all of my plants and the first two rows I'm going to do my blue kale and my purple kale and I have them spaced about 18 inches apart. It's really difficult when you grew all of these seedlings to um, discard of some of them but unfortunately you have to do that. You typically overseed to make sure that you get germination and sometimes you just have to discard of the extra seedlings. So it's important to not overcrowd your seedlings. You want to give them plenty of room to grow and to develop good healthy roots. I have my garden helper on duty today and he's helping me with some holes for our fruit, fruit trees. If you recall about maybe a month ago, I had purchased these uh, trees at Tractor Supply. The, and I'll link the video uh, if you wanted to check it out. But here is, I have three apple trees, a honey crisp, a Fuji and a Golden Delicious, as well as a peach tree. The three apple trees still look pretty good and have signs of life you know, they're leaving out and so forth. But the peach tree is a little questionable as to whether or not it's still alive. I did keep these, these are bare root, so if they were at the store, they would still be in these pouches. Um, so I kept them in a cool spot in my garage. And so today we're finally able to have the time to plant them out. It's a beautiful day, not too windy. So that's what we're working on. And, <laughs> did we hit another rock? No, the, the main line going to the garden. Oh, okay. That I the pecs that I ran like three years ago I for the hose it. it's not leaking but it has a little indent so I probably have to just repair put it put a coupling in it yeah always something always right something. yeah <laughs> we either rocks, we either hit rock or in this case look we have George installed a hose um, in my garden which is super helpful um, and also runs all my irrigation on a timer when the summer comes it's so convenient because I don't have to worry about watering too frequently um, because it takes care of it for me but in any case he did have to run see the house is all the way up there 
there's a pipe that comes down. We had to trench it all the way through. And it just so happens that the spot that he picked to put one of the trees is where some of that um, PVC pipe was. So I finished planting out all of the winter sown veggies. Um, so winter sowing works so well. I don't even have to harden these off. They are already hardy um, and good to go. So the first row here, I have my um, blue kale, my purple kale. I have about four planted in the row. I did roughly, um, you know, 18 inches on center for these spacing wise. And then here I have my purple broccoli and you can kind of see there's a little bit of tint of purple on the foliage. So I have four in this row. And then I planted my Brussels sprouts. They get larger, so I have three Brussels sprouts here. Then I have my collards in this row. I have three collards, and then I have two cabbage in the last row. The next step is to water this in and to put up the insect fabric. If you don't have one of these hose nozzles, I highly recommend them. Um, I bought this with my own money. I got it at Lowe's. And what I really like about them is that instead of the traditional hoses that you have to kind of hold and squeeze the trigger, with these, you just kind of um, open it this way and hands off. You can just hold the handle and it, there's no pressure on your thumb so that you don't fatigue your hand from watering. Before I throw on the insect cover, I'm gonna actually sprinkle down some crushed eggshells that I've been saving um, around the base of each plant for slug control. And the eggshells are down. It looks like little confetti around each plant. And so the goal is that this works similar to sluggo, where if the slugs slither kind of across the eggshells, they don't like the feeling of it and hopefully the, they will turn around and go away. And so these are the eggshells that I saved over a period of time and what you do is anytime that I would use eggs I would just rinse the eggshells let them dry and then I would crush them up and save them in this container to use for this purpose George finished digging up the holes for the trees the fruit trees and crisis averted with that hole he was able to um, you know take care of that so it's all set we went and dug a new hole or he did on the you know a little bit further away so that we avoid that water line or that pipe altogether and now we are just opening up the fruit trees that are in the bare root pouch and we're gonna soak them um, for a while we're gonna go have lunch and then we'll come back and finish this up so this is what the bare root looks like they pack it in what looks to be some kind of peat moss material and then you have to soak them to rehydrate them before planting. That one had good roots, huh? Yeah. Nice. So as you can see, I have the uh, insect netting up now and I'm trying to secure it. So what I did was I used some bamboo stakes that I just have laying around the garden. I use them for everything from trellising my dahlias, um, my peppers. So I have a stack in the corner of my tomato stakes and of all of those bamboo sticks. So what I did was I took a couple of the shorter pieces, a couple I had to cut, and I made posts so that the netting could sort of sit on top of it. And now I have these clips that I had bought at some point, either at the Dollar Tree um, or like Do Dollar General. And what they are, are clips that I typically use when I have my um, squashes or cucumbers trellised on these arches. I will use these clips to secure the, um, the vines. And so I'm gonna use these to secure the netting onto the bamboo sticks to kind of keep it down so that you know the wind doesn't blow it away and so forth. So that's what I'm gonna do next.
If you don't have a mailbox in your garden, I highly recommend it. It's so convenient. My um, shed is kind of a little bit of a walk. I mean, not too far, but anytime I have to leave for tools, I'd have to take a hike up to the shed. So I put this here with all my random stuff, twisty ties and a set of gloves and any random tools or packs of seeds um, that I'm not gonna finish using that day. And um, I really like it. I think it's really helpful. The netting is up, it is secure, and hopefully no cabbage moth or caterpillars will get in there. And um, yeah, so let's see how that works out. Now I'm onto the onions. So this is onions yellow of Parma, and um, I'm gonna go ahead and plant them in this bed here. And I'm gonna kind of um, plant them in clumps. I watched a video by uh, Charles Dowding where that's how he did it and kind of the onions push each other out of the way So I'm going you know to allow themselves room to grow and so I'm gonna go ahead and plant them kind of closely using that method and um, yeah, so that's Hopefully gonna work out well Onions are now planted and watered. And I'm gonna show you another member of the onion family that's getting ready to bloom. Here are the chives. I just noticed that they're all butted up. These have really pretty pom-pom purple flowers when they finally bloom. Sort of like allium. planted our fruit trees. So this apple tree is a honey crisp and according to the tag, this is full to partial sun. Of all the places that we have our trees, this is the spot that is more likely to be part sun. Um, it gets full morning sun, but right about noon or just after, it starts getting shaded by the tree here. Hopefully it does well here. Um, and the others are full sun, so we place those in a more full sun location. Now, according to the instructions on these bare root trees, when you plant them, you're also supposed to cut a third of the height off. The goal is to get the tree to produce more roots instead of sending its energy to producing more foliage. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and take about a third of this tree off. So about a third is, I would say, right around here. So I'm gonna go a little above a leaf node and I'm gonna cut it. Seems counterintuitive, but it's what the instructions said, so we're going with it and hoping for the best. I think it's gonna work out great. So about a third, right around here, I think. And lastly, we have a peach tree. Now the peach tree is showing the least sign of life, but according to the tag, it blooms in July. So maybe it's just still dormant. And now that it's been soaking and that it's planted, it'll break dormancy. So I'm gonna do the same here and take it down about a third. And it is green inside. So there certainly looks to be life. So I think it's just, you know, a little bit slow to wake up. Just like mint can be invasive in a garden, so can berries, specifically raspberries and blackberries. Um, here I have some raspberries and a couple of years ago I was growing these inside my garden, but they got to be really aggressive and they were taking way too much space. So I've moved them out and I'm growing them in these um, whiskey barrel containers and they're doing really well. Um, this one here is a red raspberry and then I have two gold ones. Um, which I'm really excited. This one should probably give me fruit this year. This one's called Fall Gold. 
And right here I have an Ann raspberry, which is another variety of gold raspberry. I planted this just a couple of months ago when I filmed the video that was called a spring-like winter day. And so it's actually doing really well. In the next planter, I have a black raspberry. And that one I also just recently planted. I can insert some footage. Um, it's a small variety, and so I think it'll do really well in a container. So this is a good option if you're limited on space. You can always try growing your berries in containers. Back on March 8th, I tried an experiment where I planted some things out to see if they would germinate early and I would get some um, spring crops a little bit sooner than typical, but that didn't work out. However, a lot of the things that I planted didn't germinate is what I'm trying to say, but some things did. So these just sat in the soil until the temperature was right. Here I have some carrots and they're starting to sprout. Over here we have some bok choy. Swiss chard and a couple of spinach. So while it wasn't a complete success, not a total fail either. Um, I just had to wait until the temperature was right for them to germinate. Some more things that I've just noticed that are sprouting. So here are some, these are beets that I sowed. They're starting to germinate. Let's see, there's another beet right there. A couple of the radishes sprouted. So there's one here and then there's a couple more out there. So yeah, not bad. And there's two other things I'm gonna show you that did okay. Over here I planted some sweet peas or uh, sugar snap peas along the back of the trellis and um, those are doing well. Uh, a couple of them that were here and here didn't germinate, but these were a little bit older seeds, so I'm glad to have gotten anything really. And here I have a bunch of cilantro and there I have arugula. Some herbs are perennial for us here in my zone 6B. Oregano and sage are two of them. And I'm gonna clean up this oregano now. See, I've had this patch here for a couple of years and it does really well for me actually. It does have a tendency to kind of you know, spread itself around. So I do have to cut it way back at some point during the summer. But I'm just happy that it's perennial. I don't have to reseed it every year and it's a great herb to cook with. This here is my, uh, my sage patch. And so this one is a little bit of a woody kind of herb. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna kind of clean it up a little bit, you know, take this dead wood off and uh, just rejuvenate it a little bit. And it looks like it's already sprouting some from the bottom. So yeah, this one perennialized for me too. We came back after the winter. Which is, this is always exciting when things return without much input from the gardener. This is another herb that has a tendency to be a garden thug and this is um, mint. So I have peppermint and spearmint in this grow box here. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean it up and this is another one that comes back for me every year so I guess you could say it's perennial. Um, if you have this in your garden, it's recommended to keep it in a container, growing in a container instead of in the earth um, so that it can keep, so you can keep it more contained basically. So that it doesn't come to become too problematic and invasive in your garden. So I'm just going to clean this up a little bit also. It's really good for making mojitos. All cleaned up. I got all the cool weather veggies that I had winter sown back on February 5th planted out. 
the onions, the brassicas, like the um, Brussels sprouts, the kale, the collards, the broccoli. So I have the insect cover on it. So hopefully that keeps all the pests away and I'll actually get some veggies. Um, I'm hoping to come back and be able to do a veggie garden tour in a few weeks to kind of show you how things are progressing. Um, we also got those fruit trees planted. Those had been weighing on my conscience. I really wanted to get them out in the garden. We just hadn't had time. So hopefully those start to thrive in like their new spot as well. And um, yeah, and we did a little bit of cleanup. So all in all, a great day. The weather is perfect today. Nice and warm and finally spring-like without too much wind. So thanks for hanging out with me and I'll catch you in the next one.